Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon. Let's have some fun. Story brought to you by Karen Elizabeth L. Chuck was feeling pretty low. He had managed to strike out every single time at bat that afternoon. Striking out was what Chuck did best. He was so good that he never once came anywhere close to the ball, much to his teammates' disgust. The fact that Chuck was even on the team showed how very understanding his coaches were. He had no talent for the game, despite intense training. Actually, Chuck hated the game, but his mother insisted that baseball is what boys do, and he had to do what other boys did whether he liked it or not. Chuck preferred to stay home, and at least that way no one made fun of him or called him a wimp and a sissy when he struck out or dropped a fly ball. Chuck's dad had left the family years earlier, and there was no one to teach him the things he needed to know to fit in. His coaches tried, but it was really no use. Chuck just wasn't cut out for athletics. That afternoon, though, Chuck found something he was good at, a talent he never knew he had, something he was probably better at than most of the boys he knew. That afternoon, he found that with very little work, he could look as cute as any girl he knew. Chuck would probably never have made the discovery on his own. He was too involved in his reading to care about anything else. Fortunately for him, his sister Jill needed some help with her home economics project, and Chuck just happened to be handy. Jill was Chuck's older sister. She was 16, a junior at the school they attended. He was 15 and a sophomore. Jill had been taking home economics for several years, but this year was different. This year, she had to learn to sew. Learning the basic stitches was tough enough for Jill, but now she had to put them together as an outfit. She had managed quite nicely so far, choosing a simple dress pattern that once completed, she wouldn't mind wearing. The dress was a pink shift with zipper in the back and a sewn-in belt around the waist. So far, it hadn't posed any real problem, but now she had to make sure the length was just right and that the side darts were perfect. She couldn't make any changes while she was wearing it, so she turned to the only person she knew that was close to her size. Chuck, she called sweetly. Could you come here? I need your help with something. Sure, Jill, be right there. He called back, putting aside the book he was reading. What's up? He asked as he entered her room. I need some help with my sewing project, and since you weren't busy, what kind of help could I be? Chuck asked. I don't know the first thing about sewing. You don't need to be able to sew. All I need is for you to wear this for me while I make some changes. Chuck looked at Jill as if she were asking him to jump in front of a moving truck. You're goofy, he exclaimed loudly. I can't wear your dress. What if someone sees me or something? Please, Jill pleaded. Mom's not my size and you do owe me for the help in geometry, remember? Yeah, I know I owe you, but this is way too much to have to pay. If anyone saw me, I'll close the curtains and I promise not to tell anyone. Please, Chuck, I really need help. Chuck wanted to refuse, but his sister was his only close friend, and she had always been there for him. All right, Chuck said in a low voice, but this makes us even for the geometry. Jill gave him an affectionate peck on the cheek. You're a doll little brother. I'll make this up to you, I promise. Now I'll wait in the hall while you get changed. Jill quickly left the room, leaving Chuck to get changed. As he undid his shirt and slacks, he found himself thinking that this time he'd really gone off the edge. Imagine a boy putting on a dress just to help his sister with a class. He could just imagine the teasing he'd get if anyone ever found out about it. After getting his shoes, pants, and shirt off, Chuck reluctantly slid the dress over his head and put his arms into the short sleeves. He pulled it down as best he could before calling Jill back into the room. This is as good as I could do, he said, shrugging his shoulders. I can't reach the zipper. No problem, Jill replied as she turned him around and zipped up the dress. Let's see just how much work I still have to do. Jill took a few steps back to admire her creation, then had Chuck turn around so she could see how the dress looked from the back. I need one more tiny little favor, Chuck, she said slowly. Now what? Chuck asked skeptically. Isn't it enough that I'm standing here in a dress? What else could you possibly want from me? A bra, Jill said softly. I need you to wear a bra. A bra, Chuck shouted. No way, no how. I'm getting out of this right now. Please, Chuck. 
uh, I know I'm asking a lot, but it's really important to get this just right. And without a bra, there's just no way to tell if I have too much material. But a bra? What next? Stockings? No, just a bra. I promise that's it. And I'll be forever in your debt. Chuck thought for a second. He was already standing there wearing a dress, so what difference was there in adding a bra? The curtains were shut. No one could see what he was doing. Okay, but that's it, he said as Jill brought a bra from a drawer. Promise me that you won't ask me to wear anything else. I promise, Jill replied as she unzipped the dress and helped him take it off his shoulders. Now hold out your arms so I can get this over with. Chuck meekly held his arms out straight so that Jill could slide the bra up to his chest. A moment later, she had it fastened and was reaching for some pantyhose. Hold on, Chuck shouted. You promised. Calm down, laughed Jill as she inserted the pantyhose into the cups of the bra. I'm just adding a little padding. I think I look better than the average boy, you know. Sorry, Chuck said sheepishly. I was getting a little worried. Relax, we'll be done in a few minutes and you can take the dress off. Jill proceeded to tuck here, measure there, and pin various parts of the dress. Finally, she stepped back and smiled. Okay, little brother, you're all done. Let me help you out of that before you stab yourself. Jill unzipped the dress and carefully helped Chuck step out of it before unfastening the bra. You know you didn't look bad at all in that dress, she smiled. I'll bet that with little work you'd really look cute. Excuse me? Chuck asked, shocked that his sister would even suggest what he was thinking. I didn't mean it to sound nasty or anything, Jill replied. It's just I'd bet that with a little makeup and a curling iron, you'd look like a cut E girl. How about it? Want to give it a try? No thanks, Chuck shot back. I think I'll take a rain check on that one if you don't mind. I have enough problems as a boy without being turned into a girl. Your loss, Jill replied. Besides silly, I wasn't going to turn you into a girl. I just thought it would be neat if... Chuck cut her off before she could finish. Thanks, but no thanks, Jill he said as he pulled his pants back on. Help me out of this bra, please. After Jill unfastened the bra, Chuck pulled on his shirt and pants and went back to his reading. Weeks went by since he helped Jill, and yet he couldn't get her suggestion out of his mind. Finally, one Saturday when their mother was working, he went to Jill's room where she was putting the finishing touches on her dress. Hi, Chuck. What brings you up here? Jill asked as he entered the room. I've been thinking, he said slowly. Remember how you said you'd owe me big time for helping with your dress? Sure, Jill replied. Name it, help with algebra again? Well, Chuck stammered. Actually, I was thinking of different kind of help. Like I said, name it and I'll see what I can do. I couldn't have finished this dress without you. Remember how you said that you thought I'd look cute? Chuck mumbled as he stared at the floor. I'm sorry, Chuck, Jill said. I didn't catch what you said. Chuck took a deep breath. Then knees shaking, he repeated himself. Are you serious? Jill asked, dumbfounded. Please don't laugh, Chuck said, tears welling in his eyes. I just can't seem to stop thinking about what you said and if you'd be right. I didn't mean any harm, Chuck, Jill said worriedly. It's just that for a second or so, you looked sort of cute standing there in that dress. I didn't mean to upset you. I'm not mad, Jill. Honest, I'm not. You said I could ask any favor of you and you'd do it. That's the favor I want. Jill stared at him for a few moments before speaking. Are you sure about this? It was all Chuck could do to get the words out of his mouth, but he finally did. Please, Jill, he pleaded. I haven't been able to get it out of my head since you asked me to help with that dress. Okay, already. If it's that important to you, I'll help. You are sure you want to try on my clothes? Jill shrugged her shoulders, still unsure. I'm positive. Mom's not going to be home for a couple of hours, so I thought this would be a good time. Okay by me, Chuck. I promised I'd help with anything I could. There's just a couple of things you need to decide before we get started. Chuck's heart was beating so hard, he thought it would burst. He'd thought about this over and over again for weeks now, and finally he was about to go through with it. Shoot! First of all, how far do you want to go? Just make up. What about your hair? Tell me what you want and I'll take care of it. Once again, Chuck had to call up every last bit of strength he had left to answer his sister's question. I want everything. Everything? Jill repeated. 
as in a dress and everything. Everything, Chuck repeated. Please. Jill waited a second before she slowly asked her next question, wanting to make sure she really understood what Chuck wanted her to do. As in a complete outfit, with stockings, shoes, and... She paused again. Underwear. Please, Jill, this is hard enough. Chuck sobbed. Please, I want to wear a dress and all of the underwear and stuff you'd wear with it. Everything! Jill handed him a tissue and told him to start getting undressed while she got some things ready. She kept talking to him the whole time, trying to calm him down and make him relax. I think we'll start simple and work our way up, she said as she went into her closet. Let's start with a pair of jeans and a top for now, okay? Chuck nodded agreement as Jill laid a pair of her jeans and a top on the bed next to him. She then went to her dresser and pulled out a pair of white cotton panties, a bra, and a pair of her socks. Put on the underwear, socks, and jeans, then call me and I'll help with the bra, Jill said as she gave him the underwear. Enjoy. Chuck's hands trembled as he removed his underwear and pulled on the ones Jill had given him. He noted that they were only about half as thick as his underwear, and the waistband was much thinner, too. He pulled on the socks, then quickly pulled on and zipped the jeans before calling Jill. Not bad, Jill said with an admiring glance. How's everything feel so far? Soft, Chuck said happily. Soft and very comfortable. Great. Let's get your bra on, then we'll get started with your hair and makeup. Chuck felt a little uneasy hearing Jill refer to his bra and his makeup, but it was his choice to put on girls' clothes in the first place so he couldn't let this bother him. Jill showed him how to put on a bra by himself, just in case he ever wanted to, then sat him in front of her vanity to work on his hair and face. She took her time to make certain that everything was perfect then, after about half an hour of spreading things on his face, eyes, and lips, sprayed his hair with water and used her curling iron on it. Once she was satisfied, she patted the bra with pantyhose, then helped him into the top to keep from messing up his face and hair. Staring at himself in a full-length mirror, Chuck was stunned to see that his sister was right. He looked so much like a girl that he had to put his hand up to make sure it wasn't Jill in the mirror. Happy? Jill asked hesitantly. I think you look pretty good if I do say so myself. Thank you. Chuck cried as he hugged his sister. I can't believe how nice your clothes feel. Even your pants feel better than mine. Yeah, replied Jill. Whenever I helped put away clothes, I always noticed how soft my things were compared to yours. I guess girls are just luckier than boys. Way luckier, Chuck said as he ran his hands across the top and over the jeans he was wearing. These feel so nice. I wish I never had to take them off. You look really nice, Chuck. Those jeans look great on you and you've got a really cute shape. Want to see what you'd look like in some other outfits? Chuck was already pulling off his top, so Jill went to find something else for him to wear. She came back with a pair of white shorts, a green top, and green socks. Chuck quickly pulled off the jeans and stepped into the shorts. He carefully pulled the top over his head, then tucked it into the shorts before putting on the socks. Once again... He saw a young girl staring at him in the mirror, and once again, he couldn't wait to try on another outfit. So far, so good, Chuck, Jill smiled. How about my school uniform? You mean, your skirt and blouse? Chuck asked, hopefully. Sure, any problem with wearing a skirt and stuff? You don't think I'm weird or anything, do you? Well, it is kind of strange for me to see my brother wearing my stuff, but if you don't mind, I don't care either. Now, ready for a skirt? What about the rest? Chuck prodded. You said I could wear everything you wore, remember? I remember. Start getting undressed while I get the stuff together. As he removed the shorts and top, Jill handed him a half slip, knee socks, a pleated gray skirt, and white cotton blouse, which he eagerly donned. Although she didn't quite understand her brother's fascination with dressing up in her clothes, Jill couldn't miss the satisfied look on her brother's face as he buttoned the blouse, then tucked it into the uniform skirt he wore. Oh, his hands trembled as he zipped and buttoned the skirt before slipping on the blazer Jill held out to him. Chuck slipped on a pair of black loafers Jill always wore to school, then picked up a stack of books. See you after school. He laughed as he pretended to leave the room. 
Hold up, yelled Jill playfully as she handed him her purse. I never go to class without my purse. I'd be lost without all the stuff in there. Chuck accepted the purse, then slung it over his shoulder the way he'd seen Jill do it. Well, do you think anyone would notice the difference? Jill studied him for several long moments. She looked at him from the front, then from the back, then from each side. As far as she could tell, he was every bit a girl going off to school. I think they might get suspicious when you flunked every class and definitely in gym class, but other than that, I really doubt it. You look so much like me, it's spooky. Chuck suddenly noticed that Jill was getting a strange look on her face. You're up to something. I can see it in your eyes. Oh, I was just thinking. Jill smiled. You've tried on my jeans, my shorts, and even my uniform. How would you like to get really dolled up? Sure, why not? Thanks for watching. Check out Patreon if you want to have early access to the other parts. If not, it will be online in a couple of days.